What's going on, guys? Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a profitable 2022. Uh, if you found your way to this video, then you might be in the market for a new bet tracking spreadsheet. Uh, I put one up around this time last year, and I received a ton of great feedback throughout the year on ways to improve it and tweak it, and uh, that's what I did. So it warrant, it's different enough that it warrants another upload, I think. But if you're using last year's version, then it's going to seem pretty familiar. Uh, so before we get started, a few quick points here. First, this spreadsheet is free. I'm not looking for any likes or subscribers or money, so I just ask that people be respectful in the comments. We have two versions of this spreadsheet. We have a decimal odds version, and we have an American odds version, so just download whichever one is your preferred odds format. Point three, download links to both of these versions will be found in the video description, and when you click one, it will open a page that looks like this, and you just click on make a copy, and then you can rename it, and then it's yours to edit. Point four, who is this bet tracker ideal for? Uh, well, it's great for uh, any sports better, really. Uh, I highly recommend tracking your bets. It, it'll, it can open your eyes to a lot of things, and it can really plug leaks and kind of improve your performance. And you don't have to use this tracker. You can use any of the other ones online. But if you like this one, then, yeah, it's, it's going to be great for beginners because it's very user-friendly. And, you know, it's great for veterans, too, because it's, the data entry is going to be simple enough that if you have a ton of different sports books and bets, uh, you should be able to stay on top of it pretty easily. So it's probably not ideal if you're looking to uh, develop sports betting models because we're, we're not going to be uploading a ton of stats into this. We're just going to be doing very general data entry and, uh, yeah. Point five, what's included in the spreadsheet. So we're going to go through all of that in this video. But in a nutshell, we have our bets area where we're going to log our bets. We're going to have a tracking area that's going to give us all our monthly, weekly, daily, yearly totals. You'll see it's going to be set up for five years just because I want to keep this somewhat contained because there are going to be a lot of cells in there. But the plan is to add to it every year. I probably won't do a video every year, but we can just keep adding to it and, and keep it going if you like it. We're going to have a section, of course, for performance. It's going to have lots of lots of graphs, uh, charts, highlights, lowlights, uh, value breakdown spot where we can handicap matches. We're going to have a research area, an area that we can track our bankroll and some common sports betting calculators, area to track deposits and withdrawals, and a goals and notes section. So those are the general areas. And additionally, I'm going to put a bunch of spreadsheet tips at the uh, end of the video. And like I said, if you're using last year's version, you can continue. Or if you like the new features in this enough, you can jump to it. And I'll show you a way that if you like the features in this enough, but want to keep using the last year's version, how to add in the tabs to the old version easy enough. So that's the intro. Let's jump right into it. The first section where we are going to be stopping off is the bets area. Oh yeah, I should mention too, uh, the spreadsheet's going to have this about section, which is going to give you just a general rundown on every single tab on the sheet. It's going to go into a lot more detail than I'm going to go in this video. So with with the video and with this tab, uh, even if you're new to spreadsheets, then you should be in good shape to uh, jump into this and be able to use it confidently. So yeah, that section, pretty standard. We have four areas. We have a general info area. We have a pick and bet type area wager and odds and then the last section will be all automated and it's going to give us all of our information automatically so you'll see there's tons of drop down boxes here and that's what we're going to be using to do a lot of our data entry but right now you can see that they are all empty that's because we are going to edit this and you're going to personalize this you're going to add in all of your information no point in me providing a bunch of samples that you don't use so to populate these boxes it's actually going to be the settings tab which will be kind of our official first stop I guess so let's just give you an example let's throw a couple in here <clears throat> excuse me so yeah now you'll see the sports book section has what we just entered once we add a couple sports and leagues then we have a fully operational whoops spreadsheet yeah, that's good enough for now um, and you'll see this spread and over under section this is all you don't have to edit in any of this it's all uh, there automatically and it's all protected so uh, and on that note if you try to edit a spot in the spreadsheet that we shouldn't it's gonna give us this little prompt here and then you can override it if you want and there's gonna be some scenarios where we're gonna want to do that but 
Uh, otherwise, that's just there to protect us from breaking the sheet. If we want to see where all these areas are, we can go to View, Show, Protected Ranges, and you'll see this little graded or, I guess, uh, shadowed area. This is all our protected spots. So we'll leave that on for the rest of the video so you can just kind of get a feel of where things are. Free is also protected, and I'll show you why in a minute. We need that as a bet type to make free bets work properly with the formula. And the last fail safe is every single tab has this row four where it's going to give us a little description of what the columns do. If you see any, any bold, that usually means there's going to be a spot that we don't want to edit. Once you get familiar with the sheet, you can, you can go through and hide all of these, no problem. Okay, so now that we have our some of our, uh, I guess, data entry filled in for settings, we'll do like a pretend real world example here. Let's say, let's just say we, oh yeah, and don't worry guys about providing a complete list of all of your bet types, sports and leagues and all of that right away. Uh, you can add to this at any point and you most likely will, so. Let's just start with this for an example, and then just to make the math easier for later when I show you the bankroll section, we'll just go even money. So uh, this is just a very general example, and once the bet is settled, we would go in, if it won, there's a profit, loss, if it lost, and then push, P for push. And yeah, so that's a general example. I kind of made the mistake of doing a general example last year, but as we know there are plenty of different kinds of scenarios and gray areas you know we have parlays and free bets and odds boosts and combos and cash outs so i'm going to go over parlays at the end of the video because that was the biggest question uh from last year and there's honestly tons of ways that we can log that and i want to kind of keep this moving pretty quickly because yeah it's you know it's spreadsheet stuff so it's kind of dry so we want to keep the, the screen changing a little bit to keep interest so I will show you a couple of them real quick here. If this had been a free bet, which is a bad example because Pinnacle doesn't give those out, but anyway, free bet, it would work exactly as you would expect if it won. We're going to get the profit. And if it lost, you'll notice that we no longer lose any money. It results or it defaults to zero. And that's just because these formulas are designed to recognize free and it'll just, that's how that'll function. And then if we had a, a payout boost uh, on one of our bets, you can put the percentage in here, and you'll see that it'll give us the, uh, the modifier right there. So that's one of the new features. Closing odds, if you guys want to use that as well, it's another new feature, completely optional. You would kind of look up the odds afterward and put them in, and then you'll get a closing line value uh, number. And if there's any spots where you guys don't use or don't want to use, again, just you can hide the columns and make it shorter. That's, that's no problem at all. Okay, so that is the bets area. That's where we're going to be doing a lot of the data entry. Well, pretty much all of the data entry, really. So let's move along to tracking. So tracking, all this is going to do. Oh, yeah, this is what I meant to show you. So I didn't enter date on purpose because I want to sh mention that two ways we can log date. You can either pick uh, when the match is uh, or when it's going to be, you know, the day of the event or you can place the date as the date you place the bet so if the bets in or the matches in the future uh you, there's two ways you can go here and you can do either one whatever one you prefer you just want to be consistent with it after you kind of pick a route i prefer picking the date of the match itself just it makes it a little easier if i look through my histories to uh enter data if i don't do it the day of um, so yeah, and then when you click on the cell, it's going to open a calendar and you can just click on the date and yeah, that's how that'll work. And what tracking is going to do is it's going to search your bets and it's going to find any dates that match these, these dates here. And then it's just going to auto sum them for you. And then weekly, monthly, and yearly is just going to sum up the information from the daily tracking section. So two, uh, one, I guess one additional point uh, if you have last year or year's spreadsheet, you already know what I'm going to say. Added functionality built into these where it's only going to calculate if you have uh, data entered for each day of that range. So in a week, you'd, if you have, you know, formulas or if you have results for all seven days, it'll show you. So it's just easier to show you, I guess. If we delete one of these, you'll notice we lost the result for, for uh weekly, monthly, and yearly, because we don't have all 365 days kind of inputted. 
and when you get the spreadsheet it'll look like this it's going to be all filled out for you but if you want you can populate this section only up to the current date and what that, that'll do is it'll just hide your information on the monthly yearly and weekly just in case you want to if it might help uh, kind of discourage loss chasing or or even just even if you're winning it can help to just have that stuff hidden and what you would do is just say we would delete all these formulas these ones aren't protected let's go to the bottom delete and then to populate a formula up or auto populate it you just click on a cell that still has the formula and you hover over the bottom right it's gonna form a plus sign for some reason in the video it's not gonna show a plus sign for you but I can see it click on it and you drag down and then it just auto populates to whatever wherever you want so you just kinda of put it to the current date and then you can stay on top of it that way so completely up to you you guys have two choices there and let's get that back to normal there we go okay so performance next section up and let's see here I have a demo set up just to have a little bit of values in here this is all just randomized data so um, yeah performance another section that is completely automated we have to do anything here uh, but I will mention two points we have our four general sections from settings and you'll see all the charts that'll go over all of those four and then we have a bunch of different graphs performance charts highlights uh, yearly stuff weekly profits monthly and then a yearly kind of overlay chart and the two points I want to mention are where are we at oh yeah so bet types if I put an extra filter on the bottom here so we can kind of really fine-tune things you can kind of uh, select any one of these items that we've entered and kind of fine-tune it so if we went to like NHL it's gonna all update and the cool thing is it'll actually update the charts as well like that so that's one point and it's set to all sports by default another one uh, we'll go back to the original is you don't have to uh, log or I guess track sport league sports book if you don't want you can not you can change it to something that you do want to track I had this question quite a bit last year people want to track uh, tipsters so you could just enter whatever um, analyst you're following if you want to track their data one thing I do I, I bet a lot of pro league so I don't really have a big uh, need to separate sport from league so I actually change it to event and I like to have regular season versus playoffs and I do a lot of MMA betting so you can have pay-per-view versus fight night just one second here I guess we are have some internet problems there we go uh, fight night and then all you have to do is go and change a few headings and then yeah you can track whatever you like if you do want to track bankroll though I do recommend you keep sportsbook because I'll show you why in a second we, we'll want that information for uh, doing our deposits and withdrawals and I guess one thing I didn't mention is I have a huge list of teams here just common ones that is gonna populate some boxes in the research section which we'll get to in a moment but let's keep moving value breakdown is our handicapping section and the way this would work let's pretend there was that match kings so yeah you would enter your probability for what you think uh, say the odds were what did I say I'll just say they were even and maybe you uh, you give a probability of 55 45 so going to automatically populate the true odds and you know the implied probabilities with the juice and without and then we have this little expected value section that'll calculate if you have a lot of matches on the go at once excuse me you can uh, whatever your pick is if you click that and you have a positive value it will highlight just a good way to kind of make things stand out and then there's this kind of bet section that's going to uh, work into a Kelly criterion formula and you can you can edit that to change whatever you want completely optional and then the bankroll thing is actually connected to our next tab, Tools and Bankroll, which I'll show you right now. So here we are. Um, the way I see it here is we will kind of fall under one of three camps. Uh, people who want to track their bankroll very closely. Uh, people who 
don't want to log deposits and withdrawals, but they will want to use this tab from time to time, just as a quick reference. And then three, uh, people who have no use for it whatsoever, and you can ignore the tab completely if that's the case. But let's pretend that we do want to track our our bankroll really closely. What you would do is just as you would expect. Say we have a deposit. Again, this is all pulled from settings. Pinnacle. Let's just do this as an example. So now we have our balance from our deposit, and it's, it's reading this profit because of our win here, our fictional win. And if we had another bet, say one that was maybe tomorrow. Ooh. Oh yeah, we, we took away the, uh, the so it kind of just gives us a little red prompt. You can still enter information when it, when it does that. It doesn't, doesn't break anything. Uh, NHL. And say we had just to keep the math easy, another 100. But this one's pending. We haven't, the bet hasn't settled yet. So now we have a section for pending. It's, it's, it's taking away the, the 100 we have wagered. We have a profit, the balance, and then you can enter in information, free bets and promotions manually if you want to add in there. And then that sports book is totaled. And then uh, you do that for all sports books and it would total them all up that way. And then as you'd expect, withdrawals work the exact same way, except they subtract them. There we go right there. And here's a section that you can add additional funds or have expenses kind of excluded that will automatically subtract. So that's camp one. If you're in camp two where you don't want to log with deposits and withdrawals, but you would like to kind of do a quick general uh, kind of so paper falling everywhere. Do a quick uh, reference check. You can just delete all these formulas like so. It'll ask for this prompt because you're protected, but that's okay. We would just have to disable those in our protected ranges, which is here. You can go in and you can find it and just, just delete them. And then once the formulas are deleted, you just go in your sports book and add in whatever the value is. And then it'll give us a same way number. And then you can use this 1% kind of bankroll chart to see what a percentage of your bankroll looks like. So that is bankroll tools, exactly as you expect, a bunch of different calculators. Uh, this this bet builder one, the only thing I'll mention is if you have a bunch of different odds on the go and you uncheck these boxes, it'll automatically remove them from the from the formula there. Okay, that's that. And then we have arbitrage calculators and cash out calculators. So that's tools and bankroll, and that's deposits. We have all of that information done. Research, this is the tab that I spent way too much time on that probably no one's going to use. But anyway, I left it in anyway, just in case someone wants to use it. The way it works is all of those teams from settings are populated in these drop-down boxes. And the drop-down boxes oops, populate uh, these little boxes here where you could kind of enter uh, hunches or whatever your favorite bet type for that match would be. You can in in enter information who your favorite analysts are siding with. You can put the odds in and it'll give you the probabilities. And then there's a section for notes. We have like a bunch of just common sports. My apologies if I missed your favorite sport. Uh, I just kind of included some of the stuff that I'm a little bit familiar with. And that is research. And yeah, so that is now we're kind of really heavily into the optional sections of the sheet. Here's goals. And this one works just like a yearly and monthly goal basis. And we have this section on the right that gives us a progress rating of everything. And then the section on this that's completed on the left. So to give you an idea what you could do, um, let's see, as an example, update. That's good. So this one would have like a single milestone. So you can delete the progress bar. And then once you complete any of your goals, you click it off and it'll highlight and give you a nice little visual cue. You could have something where it's you have different milestones that you want to hit. Maybe like uh, watch 10, let's see, five games, four live betting opportunities. And then you would just delete five of these boxes, and then you get the idea. You check them off as you go. 
And this could also, because there's 10 of them, you can make it like a percentage thing. Reach 10K profit. And then as you get 10% or $1,000, you would tick them off. And don't be afraid to put in personal goals that have nothing to do with sports betting. Because this is your sheet. No one's going to see it unless you share it. So, yeah. That's just an extra section. And that is, yeah, goals and then notes. Exactly as you'd expect. You can just enter notes in here as you see fit. The box will automatically expand once you, uh, if it's too big for the, for the section, it'll just kind of automatically text wrap. Okay, so that is all of the tabs. And like I said, we're going to just quickly jump back and go over a few of the more gray areas and a few ways to use some extra features here. So the first thing I'll mention, we'll just jump over to this demo sheet, is how to use filters because this sheet will fill up really quick and it kind of helps to filter the data so you can kind of keep it concise. A good way to do that is the date filter. You can click on that and go to filter by condition select date is and then you could select the last week or month and it'll give you just that information going forward and then to reset it sorry you would just click it back to none and hit ok another one you could do would be you know wager maybe you want to see all your bets that are greater than a certain amount and you can hit ok and it'll show you those as well and that's filter by condition you could also do filter by values which is this one and it has every single item you've ever entered checked off and you clear them and then you would just pick a, yeah a team and it can show you that way so that's how the values work to reset it you go back in and hit select all and then they all come back and you can also have more than one filter on at a time and then you can save that as a filter view so then you don't have to be messing with these all the time you could do something like um, let's say Maybe you want to see all your free bets from Bet365. So you select that. Free. And then we have a very uh, specialized view. And you go up to Data, Filter View, Save as a View. And then you can rename it. It would be like uh, in this example. Yeah, and then you can quickly kind of go back and forth from it. The very first time you do have to go back and disable these filters like so but then you can quickly jump to your view and jump back perfect so that's filters and filter views like i said we want to go over a few of the other gray areas let's do the parlay thing right quick so there's a bunch of different ways that we can uh, log and track parlays recommend kind of putting a whole bunch of different parlay legs to oops separating it that way just because it'll give you more data on how you do on the longer parlays but anyway what you could do if you there's the bare bones tracking of it where you just as your pick you just enter whatever parlay three or something like that when the bet wins or loses you just enter it there's no additional data. It's the simplest, uh, very quick. The The drawback is it's not going to give us any kind of filterable data on teams and, and, and how the individual legs do. But, yeah, if you want to do that, you could do the same thing. And there's a few different ways. We could right-click the cell and insert note, and then you can enter the information in here as well. Still not going to give us filter information, but... If you want to find out a specific bet you can just hover or mouse over it and it'll give us the information that way then there's a third way we can do this in Google Sheets if you hit hold an alt and hit enter in a cell it'll actually drop it down a line so like this and then you'll have all the information in there as well again because we have extra information on a single line it's it's not going to be in the filter uh, but yeah, that's another way to do it. And then there's the, the all-encompassing way where if you want to have every single leg logged, you want to know how you're doing on everything, um, there's a way we can do that too. So what I would recommend doing is we would have our, our parlay legs, which would be, I guess, the title of the bet. And then we want to have a, a bet type denoted for just the legs. So 
what you would do here. Let's give an example. And say this one, the first one will be the title. Say three again, probably three. Uh, enter the odds. And then what you would want to do is you'd enter each leg underneath this uh, title one. So let's just quickly enter a few in. Oops. And maybe if you had a uh, mixed parlay, you can make that as a as a league and a or a sport as well, and then you can capture it that way. But what you would do here is since you wouldn't enter any of the information under the individual leg, you would just enter this as parlay leg, and then you wouldn't enter wager. You could enter odd information if you really want to keep tracking everything, but you don't have to. And then say if the the overall bet lost, we click loss, but then you can mark the legs as win or loss, and that's denoted by leg win and leg loss. So that's included by default. Reason being, the performance tab actually actually will be looking for uh, the words WLP, and so I didn't want to include all the parlay legs as bets because they're not their own bets, they're kind of a piece of a bet. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's one way to do it. If you really don't want to do any of that and have the lags and you even don't like seeing those in there, I'll show you a quick thing on data validation. You just highlight every single item, go up to data, data validation, and you'll see uh, the options right there. So you would just delete those. Okay, so that is parlays. Oh yeah, filters another thing. Sometimes the filters in, in Google Sheets will break, and it's pretty annoying. Uh, and it's because it's only fi it's filtering a range of cells. So if you ever find that it's not giving you all of the information, you're missing information, or there's a gap in between, all you would do is highlight your top section, go to you can just click this this button to remove the filter, and it'll take them off, and then highlight your entire sheet again all the way to the bottom including the headers and then click that button again and it'll add the filters back in and it'll then it's covering the entire range of the sheet just i've seen that happen to a few people last year and it's just the way google sheets works for filters uh, okay so that is filters parlays data validation oh yeah uh combos or or uh any kind of gray area where the amount is not calculating how you want maybe Maybe some legs kind of were removed or pushed from the equation. Maybe, yeah, combo is a good example because the you know the the values are hard to calculate. You can just go into your sports book and just whatever the value was, just enter it in. Um, it's a good example. You could go and just overrule the formula, and then that's done. That's how I'd recommend doing those. And what else do we got? Uh, oh yeah, the adding the filters to the old sheet, or filters, adding the tabs. So if you had an old spreadsheet and you want to add some of the features in this that you liked, you would just click on the tab and go to copy to existing spreadsheet and then select it. The only thing you got to watch out for is if you enter a section that has a lot of dependencies like bets, tracking, and performance. And by dependencies, I mean all of these sections have named ranges. To make the formulas a lot easier. If you do that, it's going to add another tab and it's going to duplicate all these ranges and you might have to tinker with it quite a bit. But if it's a, just a kind of one of the easier tabs that you want in there, goals or something, that'll copy over easily enough and you won't have to do anything with it. And that is data validation, adding the features. And I guess, yeah, that's one way to do it. You could also just be using those teams that I included in settings if you really wanted you could uh, you could make it so all of these teams let's see you go to data validation and then you just include all of the teams it doesn't matter and then what you're looking at is you'll have drop down boxes for all the teams and you can kind of as you type in a team it'll pop up really quickly just something it's kind of handy. 
And then if you don't want to, some sometimes you're going to be entering a full match, like a team versus team, and you don't want it to be all on one line. You could also do something like this. Where you'd have the pick on one line and the opponent on the other. And it just makes it a little more little more concise. I'd remove the data validation on that. But yeah, a couple options there. It's gonna be your sheet, guys. You can customize it as you see fit. You know, if you break it at any point, just control Z, which un is undo, and just undo whatever whatever we just did, and it'll get back to a spot where it was operational. And then lastly, you know, there's tens of thousands of cells in these sheets, and sometimes you're not going to get the right format that we want for whatever reason. I put an example in the About section here. If you scroll to the down here, you'll see if, if font or size of the cell or whatever is not how you want it. Click on a cell that you do want the formatting for. Control C to copy. Right click and then you'll go to format only and it will quickly change it to be what we want and then I included tons of shortcut links and tips here that you can uh, enter in or, or read and quickly navigate the sheet and of course if you guys have any comments or questions or whatever just fire them into the uh, in the comment section and I will answer them and hopefully you guys enjoy this and you get some use out of it and you have a profitable 2023 and going forward Okay, guys, thanks very much, and we will see you later.